Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Hello guys, welcome back to my youtube channel Ayuvian Daddy In this video, I will presenting about Equivalence and Equivalence Chapter 3 of Monday Books Check it out From each old opposition between literal and free translation theoretician in the 1950s and the 1960s began to attempt more systematic analysis with the new debate resolve around certain key linguists issues. The most prominent uh, were those of meaning and equivalence discussed in Roman Jacobson in 1959 and then Nida in with seminal concept of formal and dynamic equivalence and the principle of equivalent effect and the next is Peter New Marx in semantic and communicative translation and the last with Werner Kohler with the correspondence and equivalence move to Roman, Roman J. Boxen first with the nature of linguistic meaning and equivalence in his paper on linguistic aspect of translation uh, structure Roman J. Bexen described three kinds of the translation first is interlingual second interlingual and then last is intersemiotic interlingual translation is translation within the same language referring to translation between two different writing side system and then the interlingual is translation from one language to another language and the intersemiotic is translation of the verbal side by a non-verbal side. For example, is from the image. Jacobson followed the theory of language uh, proposed by the famous Swiss linguist called Schacher. And then Schacher distinguished between the list linguistic system we call Lang and specific individual utterance parole. With the central to his theory of Lang, he differentiated between the signifier, the spoken and written signal, and then signify the or we can call the concept, which together create the linguistic site. And thus, in the English, the word cheese is the acoustic signifier, which donates for the concept food mode of process cards or we can call this signifers and currently the sign is rbg or unmotivate in thread of cheese the signifier called easily have been breathed soup or any other word jacobson also stressed that is this possible to understand what is signified by a word even if we have never seen or experienced the concept or thing in real life. Move to Nida with the science of translating. Nida theory took on claim from in the Schumacher work in the 1960s towards a science of translating and the co-author the theory of practice of translation. The title of the first book is significant. Nida attempts to move the world translation into a more scientific era by incorporating written words in linguistics. The semantic approach borrow theoretical concept and terminology both from semantic and pragmatic. And from Noam Chomsky work on syntactic structure which formed the theory of a universal generative transformational grammar. And the next is Peter Newmark with the semantic and communicative translation. Communicative translation attempts to produce on each reader an effect as close as possible to that obtained on the reader or the original. Semantic translation attempts to reader as the closely and semantic uh, and syntactic structure of the spectral language allows the exact contextual meaning of the original. And then, semantic translation provides that equivalent effect is toward the literary word for word. Translation is not only the best, it's the only valid method of translation. Newmark has been criticized for his strong perspective, and the language of his evolution still bears threats of what he himself called the pre-linguistic era of translation study. Translation or smooth or a word, while translation itself is an art, if, if in semantic, or a craft, if in communicative. He embraced the aesthetic principle of writing, the difference between social and non-literally, and authoritative and serious. Translation and the ethical and truth-seeking function for, for translation. Last is the Werner Kohler with equivalence relation. He summarized the concept of equivalence more closely along with the link term correspondence. The two can be different as follow. 
first is course respondent is about within the realm of a contractive linguistic, which comprises two linguistic systems and describes difference and similarity. Uh, similarity, what is contractively? Caller, Hakim, and Mandy give the five types of equivalence relations. These equivalent types are listed below. First is denotative equivalence, related to equivalence of the extra linguistic content of the text. And then other literature say caller call this is content invariance. Second is connotative equivalence related to logical choice, especially between your synonym. Caller consider his type of equivalence to be revered to be other as stylist equivalence. And third is text for normative equivalence and related to text type with the different kind of text they having in the different way. This is closely linked to work by Catherine Reeves. And then five is paramatic equivalence or communicative equivalence. It's oriented uh, toward the receiver of the text or message. This is the dynamic equivalence. And the last is formal equivalence, which is related to the form and aesthetic of the text, include workplace and individual stylist feature of the ST. Okay, thank you for watching my video until end. Thank you.